the testing program, which we are doing in preparation of updated design for recycling guidelines, is incredibly, incredibly important. All of the guidelines which are out there today are somehow a condensation of existing expert knowledge and expert judgment, and there's very rarely any hard data to support this. So what we want to do is generate the data, which is neutral, which cannot be discussed, and then out of that data generate new, updated, more specific and more relevant guidelines. The challenges range from uh, very technical to more value chain oriented. So for example, we have a lot of labs, a lot of high level labs who are doing the testing. We have to make sure that if lab A is doing a test, according to our protocol, they will have the same result as lab B, so that we can compare this. We're putting in place also some round robin testing on top of the protocols themselves to ensure this. So that's one aspect. A second aspect is that how do we make lab testing relevant? One of the things we did is that we are testing the effects of a second element in the polyethylene or polypropylene recycling stream with as a reference, the recycled material, not the virgin material. And that already makes it more relevant, in fact, for recycling. The impacts are going to be hopefully some sort of synergistic domino. So the first people who would be benefiting are the brand owners, the people who are designing the products. So they can design their products to be more fit for recycling. And if this achieves penetration in the market, then what we get at end of life, reaching the recycling stage, is more fit for recycling. So we will have higher yields, higher amounts of recycling, but also higher qualities. So the second lifetime will go to higher quality products. And this can keep cascading, hopefully, on top of each other. Another reason why I think that these protocols are in fact quite robust is that they've gone through an entire chain of, of checks and balances along the way. So there's labs involved who do the actual testing. They made together the first proposal of what the protocols would actually be. And then these protocols were peer reviewed by two academics, Brona Miller and myself, who are not doing any of the actual testing. So we have no stake in this, but we were just brought in as ex external academics to peer review together with the labs. So we made a lot of remarks. We went into discussion with them. We involved some of the CFLEX stakeholders in these discussions to eventually come to a form of the protocol which we academics feel is robust, reliable, and which the labs still feel is possible. What we've done now by outlining these protocols is ensure that the lab testing, which generates binary data, if I have this element entering the stream, what will happen? That this data is scientifically robust. And then translating all that data to the actual guidelines is a second section, so it's separate from those protocols. So what is an important distinction here is that we are not trying to set up protocols to evaluate recyclability of a certain product. Those protocols exist, that is not what we're trying to do. We are trying to generate material-based data, not product-based data, on which different elements have which effects so that we can convert these to guidelines. So there's a difference between getting some sort of approval for a single product and what we are, what we are doing now. Mm -hmm.